Hello guys and welcome to this series of web concepts and in today's video we are going to discuss on the MIME types and its structure. Along with that we will look into the content type and content length header and we will also discuss on the concept of content sniffing or also known as the MIME sniffing. And at the end of that video we will touch base on the concept of the standard and non-standard headers. So let's begin. First of all, let's initiate our discussion with MIME type, which stands for multipurpose internet mail extension, which indicate the nature of the document or a file or the collection of byte. For instance, let's say you have a JPG file, then its MIME type will be image slash JPG. Similarly, if you have a video with the AV1 format, then its MIME type will be video slash AV1. Now, all these MIME types are defined by the INA and we can look into these in the INA official website and I will pin this link in the description of the video and here all the MIME types that has been registered with the INA we can review them. For instance let's say if we click on the audio then all the MIME types within the audio categories will be shown here right. Now moving to the next topic is to understand how a server knows what type of payload or what type of data body the request or the client is sending or what type of data or the payload body the server is sending back to the client. Basically how the server is knowing that whether the client is sending an image or a video file or a JSON text and similarly when server is sending data back to the client, how is client knowing that what sort of data is being sent by the server. It can be anything for example it can be audio, video or an image or a PDF file. So how client is knowing what data is coming and how server is knowing what sort of data is being sent by the client. This is informed using the content type header. Basically in the request or in the response, the client will attach one header that is the content type, which will have the MIME type, which will tell what sort of data it is sending in the request. Similarly in the response by the server as well, server will attach one header that is the content type, which will tell what sort of data it is sending in its body. Right. To understand it better, let's take an example. Consider this request which is saying post sharing upload S3 multipart. Okay. And here you will see that the content type has been set as application slash JSON. Basically, client is telling that my body or the data is JSON format. Right. In its response, the server is sending back some data where it is in the JSON format and it is also attaching one header that is the content type and it is mentioned as application slash JSON. Another example, let's say we are making one request to the image and in the response what it is saying that my content type is image slash PNG. What does this mean? That the server is sending the image with the PNG format. So this is how the client and server knows what data is being sent by either of them. Related to it, we have another header that is the content length which tells the length of the data in bytes which is being sent by the client or the server. For example, here if you notice we have the content length header which is telling what is the total length of this data in bytes. If I add one or two characters, let's say I'm adding two characters RR, then one of the features in the burp suit that it will auto update the content length. Right now it is 1323. If I click on send, this will be changed to the 1325. Basically, the length of the payload in the bytes. Similarly, when there is a response from the server, then again, the content length will be used, right? It doesn't matter what kind of data it is sending. For instance, even for the image, you will see the length will be there, right? So content type will tell what type of data it is sending and content length will tell in bytes what is the size of the data. Now, the structure of MIME type or the content type is type slash subtype semicolon optional parameter optional parameter may or may not be used for example in the case of the text type there could be subtype as plain and in the care set somebody can mention as utf8 so these optional parameter not always used but sometimes can be helpful now let's focus on another important topic that is the mime sniffing Basically, in an ideal world, what will happen when the server is sending any particular data, it will add the content type header and the browser or the client needs to respect it. 
For example, if it is sending the image with the JPG format, then client should parse it accordingly and show the image content with the JPG format. But that does not happen every time. Sometimes the client will not attach any content type header in the response. Or since the browser is also the software companies, they want to provide the best user experience. So rather than respecting the content type header from the response, they start to sniff or they try to guess the content type of the payload from the server. So one more time, why the browser is sniff? There could be multiple reasons. One, that the content type is missing from the response header. Second, browser thinks that whatever is the content type and the content data which has been sent are inaccurate. Basically, if image is being sent, but the data is not of type image. So basically for the browser, it thinks that the data is incorrect or content type is incorrect. Then again, it try to guess the correct content type. And finally, sometimes the browser will not even see the content type in the response header. They will try to always guess the content type by looking into the body in the response. This guessing of the content type is known as the mime sniffing by the browsers. Now, even though from browser point of view, they want to improve the user experience, but servers are not happy with that. They always want that their content type needs to be respected and to be followed because this has led to the many attacks. For instance, content sniffing attacks. Now, we will not be going into the these type of attacks, but know that these kind of attacks are possible in which browser is guessing the content type header. So, we need one mechanism or something with that the server can say that whether you should even sniff the content type or you are not at all allowed to sniff the content type but follow my content type whatever is provided in the response header. And this is where we have the additional header which is the X content type with the value of no sniff where this is indicating that the client or the browser should not be sniffing the content type in the response and they should respect whatever is written in the content type header. And as per the standards, all browser needs to follow this approach. Now here you might be thinking about the X in the header. What does it mean? Basically, when we talk about the headers, there is two categories. One is the standard and one is the non-standard headers, right? When we talk about the standard headers, these are defined by the HTTP specification officially. But when there is a non-standard HTTP header, these are created for a application specific reasons. Historically, non-standard headers used to start with the X dash or X or a similar sort of notation in the prefix. Some example of the standard headers are accept, host, content type, content length and similarly some example for non-standard headers X content type option, X XSS protection, X frame options, etc. Now, the standard headers are always known to all the client and the servers but the non-standard headers, the client may not be knowing and it is not mandatory that all the server will be knowing the non-standard headers, okay? But some of the non-standard headers, for example, X content type options or X access protection became so much popular that they also brought into the category of standard headers and all the client and the servers started to recognize them. This created a confusion between what should be taken as a standard and what should be taken as the non-standard headers. And to avoid such confusion in 2012, the concept of the non-standard headers were altogether removed. Now we only have the headers and it's up to the server or up to the client whether they understand it or not. For instance, if I talk about the X content type option no sniff, this is understood by the client, but if I talk about another non-standard header that is X pen key, which is specifically created for the Panorama and Palo Alto firewalls, this may not be understood by all the client or by all the servers. Okay, so whenever you are studying about any type of header, you need to also see whether it's a very specific to the application. For example, X pen key, or even though it is a non-standard header but now it has been bring in the category of standards. Okay, so that's all for today guys. I hope you liked the video. If you have any doubt, please comment it down. Thanks for watching and I have to see you in the next video.